Newsbreak 26 in Southwest New Brunswick. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Here's what's happening in our part of the world. New Brunswick entered the green level of recovery, ending all COVID-19 restrictions this past weekend, which happened to be the New Brunswick Day long weekend, giving New Brunswickers more reason to celebrate. Events took place across Charlotte County, including the ninth edition of Music and Arts Festival Fog Fest on Campobello Island. Kingsbury Garden in St. Andrews hosted the second annual New Brunswick Oyster Shucking Contest on Monday, where last year's champ Gerald Ingersoll of St. Andrews came out to defend his title but ultimately lost to Hugh Medill of Bocabec. Juno award-winning musician David Miles closed out the New Brunswick Day celebrations with a performance at Kira Amphitheatre. For us it was about having a big event but yet when we had to make the plans for this it was obviously during yellow phase of COVID so we uh, we have a distanced event as you can see where it's kind of a VIP atmosphere turned our amphitheater into a dinner theater type of environment. An exhibit on prominent 19th century painter, activist and abolitionist Edward Bannister launched at the Ross Memorial Museum in St. Andrews. The St. Andrews born Bannister made history as one of the few black artists working in North America to rise to international prominence in the 19th century. Despite widespread racism, oppression and the practice of slavery in the U.S., a country Bannister would eventually relocate to before the Civil War period. His works have since graced the walls of the White House and the Smithsonian and are in notable private collections such as the Obamas. So I want to leave you with one last note and this is the, uh, from the lady who's doing the documentary film on Edward Bannister. Again her name is uh, Heller. She believes, and a fine comment for today because it is New Brunswick Day, she believes that New Brunswickers should take pride in what Mr. Bannister accomplished and the role of the province and the community of St. Andrews played in his formative years. To tie in with St. Stephen's 150th anniversary celebrations, the St. Croix Theatre Company hosted a moving historical play where six different actors oh, played six yeah. prominent figures from St. Stephen's history at six different locations across town. She says it was the longest hour of her life. She must have aged 10 years that night and she still scolds me to this day. Reed Haley played a journalist interviewing the historical actors at each location. Haley says he and the cast were thrilled to be performing again after over a year of no productions during the height of the pandemic. We decided something somewhere between uh, scripted and improv, which was, again was what we did. Each character basically took the information, the bare bones from the booklet that we have and then they went on and did their own research. The full historical play will air on CHCO later this month. St. Stephen played host to a jam-packed New Brunswick Day long weekend. For more on this, here's CHCO's Ian Curran. To kick off the festivities, the Garcelon Civic Center hosted a strong man, strong woman competition on Saturday. It was an inspiring showcase of strength and dedication, with Shane Gallant leading the men's division, deadlifting 730 pounds, a new Atlantic record. Danielle Philibert won the women's division, breaking another Atlantic record in the wagon bar deadlift, lifting 430 pounds. There was also a fire truck pull event, which was nothing short of impressive. The weights were heavy, but the spirits were anything but. Then on Sunday, St. Stephen's annual Chocolate Fest kicked off. This is definitely a sweet festival you won't want to miss. Finally, on Monday, New Brunswick Day festivities were held once again at the Garcelon Civic Center. At attendance were MLA Kathy Baucus, MP John Williamson, and Mayor Alan McEachran. It's good to get the, the kids out doing some painting and, uh, and having cake and socializing again uh, safely. With the removal of the mandate, spirits were high and smiles were visible throughout the town. Ian Curran, CHCO, Newsbreak 26, St. Stephen. Thanks, Ian. Ian will have more to report from Chocolate Fest later this week. That's all the news I have for you. For more stories and online exclusives, follow us on Facebook at chco.tv. This has been a news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.